Today, I'm going to talk to you about upgrading the differential on your 350Z or G35. This is an area of the car that is often overlooked because it's either too expensive or too daunting or just too complicated or it's something you just don't even know that you can upgrade. But upgrading the rear differential ratio in your car can be a great way to get a better seat of the pants feel, better acceleration, and just make an all around more exciting car. The way this works is by changing from a long gear ratio, like a 3.3, to a shorter gear ratio, like a 3.7, you are giving the car more mechanical advantage over the tires, therefore it can accelerate faster, and you'll get into the car's power band faster. There are some drawbacks, there is some give and take, it's not added power, it's added acceleration, but at a slight cost. For now, let's ignore how much it normally costs to do this modification, and we'll focus on the other drawbacks. First is cruising speed on the highway. Because you've got the shorter gears, you're going to be cruising at a higher speed for the engine. So if you're looking at this, you're going to be cruising at about an extra 100 to 200 RPM more at 55 or 80 miles per hour. So it's really not that big of a deal. It's going to be a bigger deal on the automatic cars because the final gear is not as long as it is on the manual transmission cars. Even with that, a couple extra 100 RPM really isn't going to make that big of a difference difference in the grand scheme of things whether it's gas mileage or engine wear or engine noise on the highway it's not going to be that big of a difference another concern people have when they change their gear ratio is a loss in top end speed which calculating the gearing limiting top speed on a 350z you can see that for every single combination on this chart excluding maybe those keeping the stock 6600 rpm red line of the de no one is going to come anywhere near limiting their top speed with gearing on the 350z it just doesn't have enough power and even if you had a turbocharged car that had enough power to reach some of these theoretical top speeds you don't need to you would need such a long straightaway it just wouldn't be practical you'd instantly go to jail for a very long time whereas acceleration you can use a lot more every day you can use it on an autocross course a racetrack or even just a spirited country lane, it's a lot more usable and fun usage of your power band. For every single combination other than those using the stock DE Redline with the 3.7 gears, you're still going to be able to reach 60 miles an hour in second gear, so you will still have a quicker 0-60 to 60 time, which doesn't really matter unless you're trying to sell a car in a magazine telling your 0-60 to 60 time. The cars are all going to be equally quicker it's just you're not going to have that special number to brag about. This is the same problem that I think it was the Hawkeye STI was actually slower than the WRX because of gearing on the 5-speed versus 6-speed transmissions. For those of us running our cars on tracks with longer straightaways like Roebling Road or Road Atlanta, you're going to have an issue of will I reach the top of 4th or 5th gear depending on which transmission you have on a long straight and going to have to shift into my overdrive gear. Again, you're only going to have an issue if you're keeping the stock DE red line or even maybe with the rev up red line, you're going to have a slight issue in your one to one gearing of you might start to get close to that top speed of that gear. So at Road Atlanta, if you have a big power car, if you've got turbos on it, yeah, you're probably going to reach 146 miles an hour by the end of the back straight. But if you're keeping the car naturally aspirated, and as long as you raise the red line, you're going to always have a very nice buffer between the red line and where you're actually going to need to start braking on those long straights. So as I said, the biggest problem with this modification for most people is it costs a bunch of money to get it set up properly, and the gears are probably about $700 a set once you put in all the new bearings and seals and fluids and everything you're gonna put in to get it done properly. Plus you're gonna to have to pay someone to do it or buy the specialty tools to set it up. But lucky for us, some cars leave the factory with this better gearing that we can buy the whole differential as a unit and install the pumpkin as one piece and anyone can do that in an afternoon. This is the list of cars that have the diffs that we want. You have every single Z listed that is interchangeable with what gear ratio they have in there from the factory, courtesy of Z1 Motorsports. I took this straight from their website. They are a great source. If you really wanna buy gears, I would recommend buying them from them. They're a 
wonderful resource. Anyways, this shows you what cars you're looking for. So when you're searching for used differentials, this shows you what model it has to come from, which transmission you want. Most of the automatic cars use a three-pointed flange. Most of the manual cars use a four-bolt circular flange. Some of the early automatics, like in my 2003, use the circular four-bolt flange. So you have to get a differential that matches your drive shaft. You do not want to have to get into changing out the flanges. It's a huge pain. All of the models that are circled in red are the models that we are looking for. Those are what we can pull from for that 3.7 gear ratio, whether it's a G35S, a 370, or G37. All of those cars have the 3.7. You'll notice there are some cars circled in green. Those are your unicorns with the 3.9 gear ratio. That's not going to be for everyone. I think the 3.7 is a great compromise, whether you've got the manual cars with the 3.54 or the automatic cars with the 3.36. 3.7, I think, is a great upgrade for everyone. The 3.9 is going to be a little bit more compromised, but that's something I might eventually look at but you're going to pay a premium. It is only in the manual G37 convertibles and the manual Nismo 370Zs from 2015 up. So good luck finding one of those differentials. But if you do, it is a great upgrade for the car. If that's what you're looking for, you're still going to get a good deal. I found that for whatever reason, the best place to look is for the G35S differentials. Even though they're the exact same as the 370Z and G37 differentials, they are way cheaper. I got mine for $250 and it was brand new. It had 12 miles on it, 12 miles. And I got it for 250 bucks. The only problem with it is it had a broken rear differential cover because the gentleman had gotten in an accident with the car while leaving the dealership. His loss, my gain. But these are the cars to look for. I found one on eBay. I will post this screenshot. I'm not kidding. For $230 with free shipping and it had like 60,000 miles on the differential. If your car has 120,000 miles on it, 60,000 miles is a huge improvement for that differential and these differentials do wear out with age. You can buy that whole differential, install it in your car for $230 instead of paying over $1,000 to get a properly set up gear brand new. Here it is right here, $230 free shipping G37S manual with the four bolt flange that you want and it only had 60,000 miles on it. That is a steal. That was a steal back then, it's a steal now. Whereas the 370Z differentials are going for like $500 for some reason. 400 is a good deal on those. I'm not really sure why. While you have the differential out of a car, it'd be a really good time to install the Nismo differential cover and a set of polyurethane bushings for the differential. Because A, your bushings are probably worn out and B, it's a very cheap upgrade Div cover is a must if you are beaten on this car. If you're doing track days, if you're doing racing, it is a great way to keep what is normally a part that gets really hot cool. It's not that much money and it's the easiest time you're ever going to have to install it with the differential out of a car. You don't want to have to do that job twice because the differential is heavy and cumbersome. It's not the easiest thing to get in and out of the car, though of course it is doable. To remove it from the car, all you're going to have to do is remove six bolts on each axle on the left and right hand side of the differential, four or three bolts on the flange connecting it to the drive shaft. You will have to move the exhaust and the sway bar out of the way, but that's not that big of a deal. And then you'll have to remove three different attachment points on the differential, two ears on the front, and that one big nut on the back. It's not horrible getting in and out. I would definitely see if you could get it on a jack because it weighs about 90 pounds. So picking it up and down, it's a little difficult. It's a little cumbersome. And you really don't want to drop this on your finger or something like that. But for way less than $500, you could have a differential with half the mileage of your current diff with a better gear ratio, newer, better working LSD, polyurethane bushings, and a Nismo diff cover to keep it cool. You can also change out to a newer, better synthetic gear oil while you're in there. This is a great upgrade for way less than the price of just the ring and pinion that you would buy new from an online store. 
upgraded to the 3.7 gearing about three years ago and I have loved it. It has worked great on track. It's worked great daily driving. I've done long highway trips at 80 miles an hour and haven't had any issues out of the car. I can still get almost 30 miles a gallon if I'm cruising and taking it easy. It is a great upgrade. It's a great bang for the buck. And it really helps bring the car to life, especially if you have the automatic and you're going from the 3.36 to the 3.7. It is a huge jump and it will really make your car feel like it's got an extra 50 horsepower. It's a great upgrade. I cannot recommend it enough, especially if you can do it this way and save yourself a ton of money. If you guys have any questions, drop them in the comments below. Hit that subscribe button and I will see you guys next week.